Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and beyond. I was looking on Google at what people are asking out there, and one of the top questions about this brand is in the title, is RMS Beauty good? Good is a little subjective, but I have over a dozen RMS Beauty products in front of me, and I'm going to tell you which I think are the best, and possibly the worst, so you know which ones to buy and potentially which ones not to buy. So if you wanna see more, then stick around. Let's get into it. Okay, so I have all of these RMS products in front of me. They are looking ready to go on the FOSS. If you enjoy seeing videos like this and getting honest reviews from me, then take a second and hit that like button. It makes a huge difference, so thank you so much for doing that. All right, so I'll start with the Master Radiance Base, it, this is sort of a creamy highlighting base that gives you that glow and that sheen. It's thicker, so you can put this on first. See that? It's like definitely a thick hydrating product. I'm just gonna use my hands here. I really liked this. I did find it to be a little too thick for my skin type. Uh, by the end of the day, I got a little excited. So this would be way too much. I really don't need this much especially if you have fine lines and you put on that much of this product because it's so rich and dense, it might settle into your lines. So, actually kind of perfect because it gives me an opportunity to show you what I would do when I do something like this. I go crazy. Also, I'm putting on their cream foundation on top of this, so that would be extra cream, and my skin is not that dry at this point in time, so. Sorry if you hear dinging in the background. There's just an email thing open. I'm multitasking. I'm multitasking. So I'm just taking the Sigma Kabuki brush, which you've seen a bajillion times. You could use a damp sponge, would also really work well here, I think. This shears it out. But a sponge would lift more of that product off. I just don't have one near me, so I'm not using it. It reminds me a little bit of the Jones Road Beauty Balm in Concept. If I have a full review for any of these, and I do have a full review for a lot of these, by the way, you will see a link below to the scorecard review back on my website or the YouTube video. And then if I don't have a full review, then you can hear me talk about it here and I'll have a link to the actual product. Um, yeah, this overall, I really like the glow. I'm a fan of the product. You just have to be pretty careful. If you have oily skin, this might not be your jam. Just putting it out there. As you can hopefully tell, it did give a glow. I would say this isn't probably one of the best of the bunch. That's the subjective part here. So best for me, good for me is going to be different for you. Good is very subjective. What's good for me might not be good for you. So just know that when I'm saying best and worst, it's super subjective here based off of your skin type, your budget, your lifestyle, and all the rest of it. I like it. I don't find myself reaching for it, quite honestly, all the time. But this is a good reminder. I'm kind of into this more during the wintry months when my skin is a little bit drier. So come fall, I might wanna reach for this a bit more. All right, let's hop into the cream and like foundation. If you're a subscriber to the channel, first of all, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And you've already seen my review on this and you kind of know that I wasn't like the craziest about it because it felt a little heavy as well. And again, I went overboard. You really don't need much here. It's, it was sitting on top of my skin, which wasn't recent. So I, I'm actually kind of curious to see what I think of it now, because my opinions change. Depends. Your skin changes, things happen. And I moved to a different climate completely. So I was in a very dry area, and now I'm in high humidity, which completely changes your skin. Plus the water, I don't know if you guys found this to be true, but if you're using different cities' waters on my skin, I see a difference. I don't know if that's... Now we have the foundation on top of that glow. I'm not seeing as much sitting on top of the skin. My skin just looks really, looks a little greasy to me. I think on camera it's reading a little bit more dewy, but I used two heavy creamy products. So if I were to just use this foundation, I think I would have a little bit better of a finish. By the way, this, Radiance base was in Rich in Radiance, and this is in 22.5. The foundation is in 22.5. You can see that it evened out pretty well. I think for me, the, the big catch was the weight of it when I first tried it, and then also it was sitting on top and causing those little poor pinholes. That said, I've been using a very different type of skincare regimen. It's not even 
even a regimen, but I guess it is now. I think that might have something to do with it. Skin texture is a lot smoother, basically, is what I'm saying, and my pores are smaller. So I, I'm not, I'm not hating it. I am going to mute the shine a little bit in a second, but let's just keep adding on. So. I also want to mention that this brand has coconut oil in a lot of the products. My skin likes it. Some skin types will not be able to tolerate that. So we're going to go in with the Uncover Up. This is a concealer. Here's the deal. Here's the truth of the matter. I like to put on a an SPF, possibly a tinted SPF, and then I can go in for everyday makeup. I just use a little bit of this Uncover Up under the eye. And then this is my number one best, most favorite spot coverage product for my skin. It's not heavy coverage of acne scarring or things like that, but it covers up and looks so natural in daylight and that's rare. So this too is very creamy, but it is not as rich or heavy as the first two products that I tried. It brightens, but it's not the big brightening concealer. I'm not gonna tell you that it is, it's not. If you're looking for something like that, check out the other videos. I can tell you off the top of my head, hint, is a really great one in the pot, but there are other ones that have doe foot applicators that work incredibly well. This is just a beautiful multitasker I've been using since day one and will probably continue to use. Like right there, I have a little bit of redness. My skin's just been kind of mad at me lately. You know when you start working out more, like, oh, I know. I still take my makeup off before I work out and your skin just kind of is detoxing. That's what's going on. That's driving me nuts. And that actually muted the shine a little bit from the foundation. It just gives a nice evening out under the eye. I'm a huge fan of this stuff. I can't even I can't even say enough about it, but this is 100% without hesitation, one of the best of the bunch for me. These are hormonal breakouts. I do find using my finger for this is much better, uh, but I do also love using this as a lid primer going to have to set it going to have to set it or else it will go into fine lines and it will look sort of I say drippy but I guess you could just say oily so that's complexion done pretty much I am going to set it best 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 honestly one of my all-time favorites I can't get enough of it I'm going to go in with a setting powder this is the RMS unpowder this is something that I've used constantly a lot of people do not like this because they see the plume of powder pop up and it goes everywhere. I think I've just been using this so much that I don't really have that problem anymore. I'm using the Sigma uh, Taper Highlighter in F35. This is a really great under the eye setting brush. Oftentimes I will just use my fingers and sometimes that's the way to do it because it looks more natural that way. The unpowder, I like. Setting powders are very similar in a lot of ways. The ingredients are gonna change and then the flashback in flash photography. A lot of people say that they see flashback when they use this. I haven't, but I don't use much of it. So I think that that could be why that is. You do not get a powdery look here. It's just, it doesn't look powdery. It, my skin just looks mattified a little bit, but not dry. And this will prevent the uncover up concealer from moving around and dripping off my face specifically because it's really hot and there's you know 80 percent humidity right now so now i feel like i don't look like a drippy mess it's really hitting the glowier territory the lit from within glow not the highlight glow we'll get there we'll get there the space that's going to be very um it's gonna be a lot, whatever. I just wanted you to see all the products. This is not what I would normally do, by the way. It's not my favorite setting powder. I really couldn't tell you why. I just really like the 14E setting powder. I feel like it's a little bit less all over the place, even though the 14E does kind of go all over the place. There are some baked powders that are really good. One in particular that is rising in the ranks is the Kosas Cloud Comfort Powder. Pretty impressive, I have a full review on that. Link to that below if you want to check it out. The way that it's even made is cool. It's just a cool product. But that's not going to give you any mess, and that'll give you a bit more control when you apply it on your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the touch test, as you can tell. A little tacky, a little sticky. I would expect that. I really would not use the Radiance Base with the foundation on my skin. Okay, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? Do I want to do highlighter next or do I want to do highlighter on top? I have the Magic Luminizer, which is the cream highlight. 
and I have the powder highlight here, which is the Luminizing Powder in Midnight Hour. Out of the two of these, and this may be an unpopular opinion, but I have them all the time over here, so welcome if you're new. I prefer the powder. I like the powder. I think this is one of my favorite highlighting powders. It applies incredibly well. There's no glitteriness happening. It looks beautiful on, and it doesn't add an extra layer of moisture if I don't want it. The Magic Luminizer is something that's really fun to work with. You can work it into a number of different places on your face. I like this one's sort of at the end of its rope, but um, I'll do a little bit of both. I'm not gonna do a ton of Magic Luminizer, by the way, but you can just sort of press it. It's kind of also what I love about this. A lot of these pots, you just sort of press it onto the skin. I remember watching makeup artists and they were just like, so light with their hands and it just looks perfect. I'm like, why doesn't it do that on me? I feel like this is sort of a foolproof brand in that way. You just, you don't have to try too hard with it. If I want a brow lift without going under anesthesia, I mean, it's not that good of a brow lift. Do you see that? Oh girl, yes, yes. It's in the middle. Oh, now I just want to put it all over my face. It's just beautiful. This is this is fun for me too because it's I try so much stuff and I forget these products. And then you can do the typical stuff that people do, which is like Cupid's bow. I like the Cupid's bow. I'm not very pro, you know, making yourself have a glowy nose. I'm not contouring my nose, but I am all for people embracing what makes you happy and what makes you feel good and beautiful and whatever that means to you. Do it, especially after last year. Like just. Do what makes you happy and feel good, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. I don't currently have RMS eyeliner or lip liner, um, so I'm just gonna do that off camera really quick using just a basic black eyeliner and we'll be right back. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, I will do the powder highlighter after I apply the bronzer. Right, so the eyeshadows, I have these in Twilight Madness TM21. The whole naming convention here is just, it's complicated. If you know, then you know. Uh, the other one is Tempting Touch in TT76. One is a pale silver. One is a warm and kind of bisque color. Maybe not bisque, I don't know where bisque came from. What I love doing every day is I take these two, I put them in the crease, and that's it. That's my go-to everyday situation. So this is the warmer color. Sorry, you're supposed to do this, I guess. Five years later, still not, still not doing it. I'm gonna close my eyes so I can zoom in on this. Such a pretty color. Oh, love it, and that's it. That's, that's one part and it sort of matches my shirt. Totally did that on purpose. I didn't do that on purpose. And then the silver <clears throat> I put on top. I don't know why. I just like when I have a warm and a cool. And this is shimmery, the other one's matte. This is not high shimmer. I love a good matte right now. What do you think? Are you into mattes or shimmers? What is good, what's your go-to for summer? Cause usually I would think it would be a shimmer for me, but no, I'm just, I'm going towards the mattes. That's the eyes, they're done. Really one of my all time favorite combinations. Overall, if these were not in plastic, I would be really into This them. is the cream shadow. Bought this from Credo. Had it for about three weeks and it just, it went bad on me. It smells like old crayons. I called Credo, they sent me another one. That too went bad really fast. But I have this in Seduce, which is just this beautiful bronzy, Porch. and I was loving it until I wasn't loving the smell of it. And it's quite dark, you can see on the finger. So if I went on my lid, that way you'll see it. So there you go. Really great pigment. I just don't like the way it smells. It's turned on me. You see me tomorrow on Instagram and I have giant red eyes. Now you know why. I like that. I think I need some more coffee. Do you need some more coffee? They used to have aluminum lids and then they went plastic and I just want to plead with them to change them back to aluminum. Please, please, please. From here on out, it's lips, mascara, and bronzer, and the powder highlight, right? Oh, and blush, oh my god, I'm still going. All right, I'm gonna move faster because this is taking me a long time. Let's do the mascara. This is the new straight up mascara. I'm going to have a full scorecard for this soon. This was gifted by Integrity Botanicals, really great resource if you don't know them. The first RMS mascara that I tried was a complete flop for me. 
not good, no volume. This one I like better than that one. Definitely more of a natural lash as you can see. It's certainly more of a flexible formula, not wet, not dry. It's soft, it's a soft mascara. You can build up, just takes a minute. You know what I mean? You gotta put a little elbow grease into it. This is more of a, a natural looking lash multiplier. It's definitely getting on my lid a little. You know what I mean? It multiplied on the second coat. It gives a little bit more volume, but it's really soft and natural. It's really pretty. I 100% think it's an improvement from their first formula, so congratulations RMS. Much improved. Is it my favorite mascara? Not right now, not yet. I'm still trying it out. If you want to see my favorites, go to Brit's Picks. You can check it all out there, but yeah, still checking it out. And let's try the blush. We have the Pressed Blush in Lost Angel. I'm just a lost angel, you guys. Not at all, really. That's a total lie. Boom. This is a pretty soft pink blush. I don't use it a lot. You know what? I don't even want to put this on yet. There is some gold to this. It's sort of a pale sheer gold, not a glittery gold. I do want to go in with the bronzer first. This is one of my top favorite bronzers. This is the Madeira bronzer. It's the luminizing powder. I broke the palette, so I crushed it up and put it into this little plastic container because I had it. I did buy that new plastic. This is a stronger bronze with a sheen to it. Luminizing, illuminizing powder. Just know that, but it is so pretty. Here we go. So nice. You don't really need much for this to bronze up your face. And even though I have glowy product on underneath that's dewy glowy, uh, this does not create shine. It, it creates a really beautiful sheen. So I'm just going to go on top of that with the blush. Again, I'm not a huge blush person, but I want you to see the payoff. Payoff shouldn't be crazy, but it is more on the subtle side, as you can tell. There's a little bit of warming up here. More sheen, just more sheen, more dew, more sheen, bring it. Why not? I'm gonna look like, like I'm carrying a candelabra under my face all night. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Everybody wants to look like that. See what I mean? It's there. It's just not one of my favorites. But if you like something soft and not in your face and you have fair skin, this is gonna be a really nice option for you. Wait, I do want you to see the powder highlight. It's comical at this point, right? I'm not seeing, you can see a sheen here, right? You can see it right on the cheekbone. I don't know why I keep saying right, right? This is some good stuff. And it doesn't, it's not like the brush has to pick up much. There's very little kickback here. It's very easy to apply because of that. You know how much you're getting on your brush for people like me who are like fanatical about applying makeup, AKA not a makeup artist. It's a great thing. Go right over the cheekbone. Really just sort of press it on. Oof. It's beautiful. You know another thing about this stuff? I primarily, I don't know if you have rosacea, but if you do, I have a little bit it's, I don't even know if it's technically rosacea. I think it's just pink undertones for me. I used to have rosacea. Um, so maybe this is remnants, I don't know. But there's a little bit of redness here sometimes on my skin when it's inflamed or I've had sugar, basically sugar, dairy, things like that. It's just my skin. If I need an evening out and I don't wanna wear a foundation and I don't want something wet on top of my face, say it's really hot out, one of my tricks is I will just use this and the light reflection evens out the skin. I just put a whole bunch on but the glow on this powder is very seamless. Very, very seamless. It really melts into the skin, yeah. My skin doesn't naturally glow like this. You're gonna know I'm wearing some type of highlighter, but for a highlighter, it just pops so well. I love it. So that's one of my best, if you couldn't tell. Now it's on to lip stuff. I don't know if I got a bad batch, but one of my favorite colors is Jezebel and Rebound. These are both reds. So Jezebel is more of a purple blue red. It's this guy, I will swatch it for you. It smells horrible. It went bad so fast. Again, I bought this at Credo. I asked them for a redo. They did send another one to me and you know, it went fast again. 
started smelling terrifying and if you put it on your mouth like ugh. so i just didn't want to ask for any more and it, it could be a bad batch but it was a really bad experience then i have rebound which is a beautiful red i'm going to swatch that for you and i have a full video on that if you want to see it I don't feel like wearing a red tonight though. I want to wear a rose or tonight. I keep saying tonight like it's night. I, today. I want to wear a rosy pink. So I have Vogue Rose. And the other reason I like this lipstick is because it lasts very well. I have a very light layer of a balm on like I mentioned. And I just pop this over. So here's what I like to do. I want to do a rose, but this tends to be a little bit light for me. I'm going to take this. It's pretty. And I'm gonna add, not the stinky one, I'm gonna add the rebound on top of it because I layer lipsticks like it's my job. That would be the best job ever. Okay, so you're bringing in a bright red here and you're thinking that was a bad idea, right? No, it wasn't. It was the best idea you ever had. Maybe not ever. Do you see that combination? You don't want to wear the bright red, but you don't want a full pink, so you just combine them. I know it's not rocket science. I know that, but it just makes me really happy. That's it for best and worst. I have a lot more best than I have worst. Hopefully that helps you out if you're out there in the world looking at RMS Beauty or just clean beauty in general. Now you've seen the majority of the collection. It's not everything, but it's a nice little chunk. If it did help you out, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel so you never miss another video that comes through. They happen weekly. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then, bye.